First Kings chapter 10. 10 being the number of a Gentile. A Gentile so shows up. This would picture in the millennium Christ on the throne and Gentiles coming to him for answers. And when the Queen of Sheba, that's the first time Queen shows up in the Bible, but the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. She came to prove him with hard questions. That's the first time that word shows up. So the reign of Solomon is going out. That there is this big temple, there is this wisdom king, wise. And all this is because of his God. And the name of the Lord Jehovah is being spread out through the known world. And not just the Queen of Sheba will learn, but all people are coming to Solomon. They're coming. What is this? What is this religion? What is this God? What are you people? That's what a Christian is supposed to be. People are going to look to us and say, hey, you know, you don't act like other people act. In your trials and tribulations and all that, you've got peace, you've got joy, and too bad we don't show that all the time. And I said, we. And when Christ is in, in the millennium on the throne, he is the most wisest of all known. And people are going to come forth. And one of the prophets speaks about, like Egypt, if they don't come to Jesus, there will be no rain. I mean rain as, as wetness, water, famine. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train. That's the first time train shows up. She's got animals, camels, donkeys, people, wagons, whatever make a train. Like, you know, it's not just a choo-choo train. When you got a bride going to the altar where, where her groom's waiting, they would call that veil a train. And it's just a long line of resources. And again, with camels that bear spices. And these are the trading. And very much gold. And precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. I mean, she, she, has, she has questions. She has thoughts. And she speaks it all out before Solomon. She's bringing spices. She's bringing payment. She's not just coming to the king like, okay, here, answer my questions and don't give him anything. And a lot of people are like that. They'll, they'll, they want something for free. And, oh, I want to learn the Bible from you, but I don't want to give anything to you. I don't want to put any work into it. I want you to give all your work to me. And that's what Bible teaching is. You're expressing the wisdom of the Bible. And Solomon told her all her questions. So he's proved to her the wisdom of God. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. Now that's a type of Jesus. And when Jesus is dealing in the life of the gospel, whenever somebody came to him with a question, he had the answer. Every time. But when he asked the question, there were no answers. Check it out. Mark them. Every question was asked in the, in the gospel. Find out who asked the question and to whom was the question asked. And was asked to Jesus, there, there's an answer. Now, one time he said, well, what authority do you do these things? He said, well, i got a question for you. I'll answer your question if you answer mine. The, uh, I think it was the baptism of John. Was it of God or was it of man? And they're like, well, we don't know. We say blah, 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 blah. He says, well, we don't know. He says, well, okay. He gives them the answer. I'm not going to answer your question. You didn't answer mine, so I'm not going to. That's the answer. And when Jesus posed a question to them, there was no answer. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, so wisdom can be seen and heard and saw it. And the house that he had built, and that would be the Lord's house, the temple. The meat of his table. And he would have a feast for her. And I guarantee it, it wasn't just hamburgers and hot dogs. And when they say that these Orientals 
when they have their lavish feast, there is just, there would be food there that would make the Americans sick. There would make these animal lovers sick. It would be pheasant eggs and uh, birds stuffed with caviar and just lavish dainties of food. I can't even think about what it would, and expensive. Money would have been no object. And the sitting of his servants, how they sat, where they positioned, what they did, how they did it. And the attendants, first time that word shows up, attendants. So it looks like, as far as that word attendants, there were no call outs. <laughs> there were no holes. We spoke to the other day in a store. Well, you know, a lot of people don't show up for work. Yeah, that's your American attitude. That's your Christian, when the Bible says going all the world, preach the gospel. All right, where are all the Christians out preaching? They're not there. All right, now this next one, of his ministers, plural, that's the first time that shows up. And I want to make the reference there. The attendance of his ministers. These are people who are doing work for Solomon. They show up for the work. And you got men in the ministry who are called minister who don't do nothing for the people and the people do work for him. These ministers here are serving Solomon. Solomon is not serving them. They have nothing to do with religion. They have nothing to do with God. They are people who say, sir, would you like more wine? Would you like more pheasant? Would you like another glass? Would you like a net? Uh, whatever they did. That's the minister. And people don't realize that the true office of a pastor, of a preacher, he's the minister to the people. And in return, the people minister to him. And their apparel, what they wore. And his cupbearers. Now, the only other place that word shows up is 2 Chronicles 9.4. And a cupbearer will be someone that brought the king a cup. And Nehemiah tells us, and the servant that was in jail with Joseph told us that what they would do was, right in front of the king, they would take the grapes, they would put it in the cup, and they would smash it in the cup and make new wine. Why? Because you're showing the king, hey, look, I'm going to eat a grape. Eat a couple of them. Eat some more. These grapes are not poison. And if I'm making the juice right in front of you, unless the poison's in my hand, or in the cup. What I'm making for you, King, is, is clean. No one's tampered with it. And it's new wine. Fresh wine. Right off the grape. And his accent. The stairs. Going up. By which he went up. Into the house of the Lord. And he had these, these stairs. These columns. It's, wow. It was breathtaking. And there was no more spirit in her. I mean, she's... Wow. She's fabriclassed. She's overwhelmed. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. So she gets a report. And without television or radio or news broadcasters, word comes back to Sheba, you won't believe what's going on over here in Jerusalem. Man, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, it can't be that good. All right, mount everybody up. Let's go. Let's go to Jerusalem. Go ahead, check this out. And she's like, it's true. How be it, I believe not the words. I, I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. I, I am now a believer, but it's like, wow. Until I came and my eyes have seen it. And behold, half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth, that's the only time that word shows up, the fame which I've heard. That ought to be as somebody who comes to Jesus Christ the first time and receives and believes like, you know, I heard so much about you, Jesus, I just couldn't believe it. Until I tasted of what you really got. And for me as a Bible-believing, born-again, Bible-preaching uh, Christian, 
of the King James Bible. Since 1987, I've been saved. I still don't know what half of Jesus Christ. If you were to put me down in the chair and you're going to pull my nails out and you're going to pull my teeth out with, without any medicine and you're going to uh, poke my eyeballs out, you can do all that. I can't tell you exactly what heaven's like. I can't fathom. It's beyond comprehension. The only way I'm going to find out is when I go. And until I get there, try to bring a train of people with me. I mean, I guarantee she, the Queen of Sheba, she brought all kinds of people with her. This Queen of Sheba is like that man, that eunuch that's of Ethiopia. Here he comes to Jerusalem serving God. And he walks away with believing in Christ. Howbeit, I believe not the words until I came. My eyes have seen it. Behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I have heard. Happy are thy men. Just look at him. Smile. Happy are these thy servants. Which stand continually before thee. He's got them all around him all the time. Whatever Solomon needs, he just turns to left or right. Whatever that servant. Like I said, drink, food, napkin, whatever. There is that man. To do what needs to be done. And that hear thy wisdom. As the, as the 12 disciples were around Jesus his entire life, more so for Peter, James, and John, as they were around Jesus for the three and a half, for the three and a half years, they heard the wisdom of God. They saw the wisdom of God. They even got to be part of the wisdom of God. They learned by example, by seeing Jesus. These servants are learning by being and seeing and living with Solomon as the disciples did. Before thee and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God. Thy God. It's not her God. When Paul preaches and Felix says, Thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That's, that's the Queen of Sheba's point of view. Thy God. You know that, that eunuch of Ethiopia, when he left Jerusalem, it's, the, it's thy God. After meeting with Philip, he's my God. Thy God which delighteth in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel. Look how she puts past tense. That's not the case here. He's loving Israel right now. They're not in sin. There's peace. There's glorification. They're just been the, the, the temple's just been greatly dedicated. Solomon says, Lord, I gotta hallow this spot that does not take offerings, but Lord, I gotta do it because there's not enough offerings by me and the people, and God is pleased to do it. The love of Israel still right now, it's not past that. What do you wait till Solomon starts falling in love with his corcubines? His wives, a thousand of them. He wait till he starts doing things he's not supposed to be doing. Then it would be loved. But she's also got, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Therefore, made he the king and to do judgment and justice. And that's exactly what Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. She has confirmed that his prayer to God when God said, all right, here's a blank check, Solomon. What do you want? Well, listen, I want wisdom how to judge and do justice of their people. Israel, my people, and the people that are under my throne. And she has validated that prayer when, when God said, all right, I'll give you that wisdom. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold and spices, very great store. Now, see how the word store is used? It's a spice store. It's just so much. And precious stones. Notice how this is mentioned twice. This was in verse 2. She brought it in verse 2. Verse 10, she gives it. She didn't have to give it. But she's just like, all right, you answered my question. You don't want oh, everything I've done here. Here it is. And came no more such 
abundance of spices as these which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. There has never been such a spice market or spice capacity or spice delivery ever, ever than what she, man, that wagon train was just filled. And her being Sheba, she just, put, I don't know if they stored spices there, if they're a leading supplier. Of a lot of these spices came from China and the Orient. Jesus got wagons, and, no, the Bible says you got a train full. Now, I don't go messing around with other modern Bibles. Some cases, verses I do, but I wonder what they do with that train. Have you ever seen some of these diesel locomotives? They've got, now down here, they got miles and miles and miles of box cars and tank cars and all other kinds of cars on them. When you got these kind of these working trains, it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. It's not like a tractor trailer. I mean, tractor trailers, you can, I mean, they can only hold so much. You can only have so many on the road, but this train. Sheba gave to King Solomon. And let's look at verse 13 real quick. And King Solomon gave unto the Queen of Sheba, all right? Now, I don't know why verse 11 and 12 is in here, but it's a commercial break. Verse 10 and verse 13 is about the Queen of Sheba, and all of a sudden, and the navy also of Hiram, we talked about that in verse 9, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almond trees, that's the first time Ogman shows up. And the only other times is in verse 12. Three places, 11 and 12. And precious uh, stones. And the king made of Ogman trees, pillars for the house of the Lord. So there are more pillars. And for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such Ogman trees nor were seen unto this day. It looks like Hiram Navy wiped out the Ogman trees and gave them all to Solomon. What are these Ogman? I know they're messed with in perverted Bibles. You know what it is? I know exactly what they are. You ready? It's called an Ogman tree. That's it. Nothing else. That's what. Don't go looking for them because it said you can't see them no more. Solomon's Navy wiped out these trees. They were so beautiful they, and strong. They were used for pillars and they were used for musical instruments and there are no more. And King Solomon gave unto the Queen of Sheba all her desire. Wonder if he gave her any of this wood. Now all her desire, she's asking for things too. And he gives it to her. Whatsoever she asks, she, uh, he gives her a blank check. Besides that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty, that's the first time that word shows up. Bounty. And the only other place that shows up is 2 Chronicles or Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9 5. 2 Corinthians 9 5. Man, she gives him much and he returns much back. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Okay, paragraph. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Six, six, six. You find that in one other place, Revelation thirteen eighteen. Here it's talents of gold. In Revelation, it's the number of a man. It's the beast. Deuteronomy seventeen seventeen says the king is not to multiply the gold. He is now. Let me say something else. Let me add to the horror of 666. Are you ready? At what time did Solomon ever read Revelation 13, 18 and get the idea that 666 was wrong? He had no idea. So don't go running those Solomon 6 to mark of the beast. He had no idea to mark of the beast. Okay? There's no revelation. 
to Solomon that this was the mark of the beast number. It, now, it is the mark of the beast number, but when there's been no revelation, we are not in Jacob's trouble. We are not in the tribulation period. The Antichrist is not set up. Solomon, you don't need to worry about 666. King, yeah. All right, the, the description of, of towns of gold was 666. What do you guys say about that? Ooh, that's a lot. But we received the market of beef. Give one away or, or, or go, go, go find another one. No, that wasn't said. There's no panic over here of 666. Christians panic over 666. We're not going through the tribulation period. We don't have to worry about that. Besides, besides, oh, the 666. The besides that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic. That's the old English spelling. Add a K to it. I think color. No, there's another word like that in the music. music. It adds a K. This is old English spelling. It looks more better traffic than traffic with a C. I wonder what the spell checkers would say. Of spice merchants. So besides the spices that, oh, the principal spices that the Queen of Sheba's brought, he's got merchant men going all the way to the Orient bringing spices back. So what's the most important thing in your high school, in your middle school, in your grammar school of teaching the students of Solomon the spice trade Absolutely not. CRISPR Columbus 1492 is off in ocean blue to go find another route for China to for the spice trade. And the spice trade long before CRISPR Columbus was Solomon going to the Orient, China, Japan, whatever he would go, India for uh, I forget India's got principles, huh? Ivory and all that. There's been a spice trade in the Bible time. The Ishmaelites, when they when they came to the, the, the children of Israel and they sold Joseph, they're selling spices and goods and all that. We meet people like that Friday. They'll be at our flea market. Well, they go to other flea markets and sell their stuff, just like what's going on here. They go where there's business. And all the kings of, wait a minute, and traffic of the spice merchants. That's the first time merchants show up. That has to do with spice. This is spice. They didn't have refrigeration. And if you just had plain chicken, you got to have something with it. You got to have mustards. You got to have dill. You want pickles. I mean, everything like that. You, you, spices are wonderful. And also spices were used for the medical field. And of all the kings of Arabia, and that's the first time Arabia shows up in the Bible. Some places and people I do mark as the first time. There it is. The Arabians in the Bible are referencing to the spice market. And the governors of the country. And so King Solomon made 200 targets. That's the first time target shows up. It's not a store. It's military. A beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target. So. 1 Kings 1426. 500 years later, about. 1 Kings 1426. Let's see what happens with the value of the dollar or gold. We'll start in 1425. And it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, David, Solomon, Jeroboam, the kingdom splits over Jeroboam into Rehoboam. So we're, we're about 40 years. I'm older than that. That Shidshak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures out of the house of the Lord. Nice. Steals from God. And the treasures of the king's house. And even took away all. He took away the shields of gold. Which Solomon had made. That's what we're reading right now. And King, Sol King Rehoboam made their stead brazen shields. It's a lower stand. He gave the gold away and took brass and made brass shields. It's a lower standard. So later on, these shields are 
Okay, we need money. Verse 17. He made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds. That's the first time pound shows up. And that's a weight. It's usually talents, shekels. Pound is a Gentile. I believe it's in one of the gospel too, he delivered a pound. Of gold went into one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. So he's got Lebanon under his control. Not just Israel. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory. Oh, he would, oh, people today would have killed him. He'd be mass over the, the media. King Solomon killed animals for ivory. That's the first time ivory shows up and it has to do with his throne. And then with that, you ready? You weren't you ready to put the, 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 the icing on the mad animal lovers and overlaid it with pure gold. The best gold, excuse me. He takes these animal ivories, like they do with piano keys, and he builds this throne out of it. And then he gets the best gold and he overlays all that with gold. Wasn't ivory good enough? Notice how it says the best gold. When he built the temple, it was the pure gold. But all oh, for his throne. We're now stepping away from God. We've already married an Egyptian wife. We've already started to go back to Egypt. We're going to go back in Egypt. We're going to get some yarn in a, mo in a moment. But now, here's my throne. Now, nah, that gold is not good enough. You guys got to get the best gold for me. I, you can just imagine somebody in the kingdom say, King, ivory, isn't that good enough? Hey, if the house of the Lord has got all gold on it, why don't you think? I, I mean, he's starting to fall now. The best gold. Look how the Holy Spirit put that in there. The throne has six steps. And the top of the throne was round behind. And there were stays. That's the first time and the only other place it shows up. Second Chronicles 9.18. I would think the stage would be like a hair, hand railing kind of thing. On either side of the place of the seat. And two lions stood before the stays. So if you're ever driving down the street. And this is a lot in the rich neighborhoods. And you see their driveway, and at the end of their driveway or walkway, there are two lions sitting there. They don't, I don't know if they know or not, but that comes out of the Bible. That's Solomon's throne. The lion, the tribe of Judah, standing before the throne. Now, let's go back to Genesis 49. The Lord just laid this on my heart. 49. I think it's 49. Yep, 49. Verse 10. This is the kingdom. And from here, when you read Revelation, the lion, the tribe of Judah, which also the lamb. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Well, we read in Jeremiah tonight, O earth, O earth, write this man childless, the virgin birth. Nor a Lord giver between his feet, Unto Shiloh come. And unto him shall be gathered of the people. Jesus. All the people are going to come to Jesus like they're coming to Solomon now. Binding his foal unto the vine. And his ass is cold. Well, that's interesting. Who's that? Unto the choice vine. All right. That semicolon is the church age. We saw Jesus coming on the ass of the cult. Church age. All right, now second advent. He washed his garments with in wine and his clothes in the blood of the grapes. That's Revelation 19. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. There's the kingdom. Prescribed by Jacob the prophet. Here it is. Now, did Solomon know anything about 666? No, he did not. 
Does Solomon know anything that in the book of Revelation, which he does not have, that's going to call Jesus Christ, who's going to get the throne, the Lion of the tribe of Judah? I don't think so. Did Solomon ever know that the Messiah was going to be of Judah? It's going to be of his father, David. We know that. And uh, Now, come on. All the animals that ever can be. In this chapter, there are camels, Porky, I'm not poor, uh, peacocks and apes. He rides his father's mule. Of all the animals that Solomon could have chosen, he, why didn't he choose a horse? Because nowhere in the Bible says Jesus is likened to a horse. And of all the animals that Revelation can see, he said, the lion, the tribe, why couldn't he? And the Bible also speaks of that Satan as being a lion, the devil. Your adversary, the devil, goes about as a lion, seeking who may to devour. That devil, that Satan, is an imitation of the real lion. Jesus Christ. Why are you called the Antichrist? So now we're looking at the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, that throne. And would it be a kick in the pants for people who love animals if that throne comes back? I don't know. I'm, probably not. He probably throw this guy. But what if he brings that ivory throne back and says, oh, good for me now. It's not David's throne, but it's the throne. The best goal, the throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind. So it was round, not square, round. And there were stays on either side of the place of the seat. And two lions stood beside the stays. And twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. So... Two lions before the throne. He's got six. Uh, he's got th six steps. Twelve lions. So there's a lion on each step, either side. Six, six. But he threw two extra in there, so he got fourteen. There's seven and seven now. Six on the stairs, and then one at the throne. <laughs> seven and seven. Maybe someone told, maybe someone called, hey, Solomon, that's 666, that's in the book of Revelation that we don't have. Uh -oh. Better add a couple more lines, I don't know. So, 12 lines stood there on the one side and on the other upon the sixth step. There was not the like made in, there was never a throne as the throne of Solomon. Where is it? It's been destroyed by Babylon. Has been broken down and made into something else. Wouldn't it be funny if those that ivory throne was made into a piano somewhere in Babylon courts for someone to learn, you know, the music? Maybe it was made into an instrument where, you know, as soon as the music plays, you better fall down and worship my golden image. I don't know. But it's all broken down, it's all been melted down. The only thing that is spoken about in Daniel that's still together is all the instruments that were in the temple. The plates, the spoons, the candlesticks. Everything else was broken down. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold. And all the vessels of the house of all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. None were silver. He had no silverware. He didn't have a silver spoon in his mouth. He had a golden spoon. He had golden cups. There's one. There's only one other place in the nation of Israel there were golden spoons, golden cups, and golden plates. That was in the house of the Lord. It's almost like he's imitating himself. He's being, there's no silverware. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. You, you could not keep track of what Solomon had. He had more forks than what you got in your drawer. And spoons and everything. And there was the value was endless. And if anybody ever stole from him and the cops came up, well, how much do you think that officer, there is no price. All right, for the king 
had a sea, a navy of Tarshish. That's where Jonah went. <laughs> That's about Spain. That's an area of Spain. With the Navy of Hiram. There's Hiram again. This guy, man, he's working with David and he's working with Solomon. He's building the temple. He's building the furniture of the temple. He's got a navy. He's cutting wood down. He's doing all he can. I believe this guy is Old Testament saved. I can't say that for sure, but I mean, he's just there on the spot. He has great knowledge and workmen. And the Bible says of Tyre, that's exactly what it was. The problem is they had so much knowledge in Tyre, they became lofty and they turned to other gods. Once in three years came the Navy of Tarshish. So every three years, here comes the ship. Bringing gold, but Solomon really needed more of that. And silver, ivory. <laughs> Ooh, the animal lovers really hate him now. They're getting upset that all these trophy hunters are killing all these animals. Right now, some guy killed a monkey family. The Bible says you better save your soul. And I guarantee with the reputation in the Bible, the animals they took that ivory from, they used all of them. Like, with the whaling. A lot of the products of the whales were used, the bones and everything. And apes. Now, the old, that apes is the first time it shows up in peacocks. Isn't that interesting? Okay, gold. Throw it over there. Because okay. it's going to say, you know, it's like rocks in Israel. Gold and silver. Let's put it over there. Silver. That don't even belong in my kitchen. That, that, that don't even have that in my dining room. Give it to them. Ivory. I already made my throne. And put it over there. May, may, I'll come up with something like that. Apes and Pequot Solomon. Put that in my zoo. It's like he ordered them. Apes and peacocks. And I can only imagine only soon that he had a zoo. And this is that's just weird. Now, the whole entire Bible. When was Jesus born? I don't know. Solomon had apes and peacocks. Every three years. Every three years. And if it's a zoo, where are the rest of the animals? <laughs> Come over here to Solomon's Zoo. See the elephants that have no more tusks. We shall not show you the throne. <laughs> I, this, apes and, I'm, I mean, I'm just so amazed. Apes and peacocks. So King Solomon is seen in all the kings of the earth. That includes North America, South America, and Central America. All the earth. That big round gold that everybody, some people think is flat. For riches, and not only riches, and for wisdom. He knew how to use his money. And all the earth sought to Solomon. That's kind of interesting, the earth. That's that big round globe. It didn't say world. Because if you were to say world, okay, Tarshish, uh, I don't know, whoever's in Russia at this time, and who's ever down in South America, I mean, uh, South Africa, you know, India, stuff like that. But it says Earth, the globe. And we know the Vikings came over here. We know that the Russians crossed the Bering Sea and came over to Alaska. Alaska was their territory. Were there people in North, Central, and South America, were they coming over also to Solomon? It says Earth. You're not going to learn this stuff in the, in the school. They're only going to teach you what they want you to know. To hear his wisdom. You do know that the red man in Native America. You do know that, the, that he worshipped the great white spirit. Not the great red spirit. Not the great black spirit. But the great white spirit. White purity. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. So that wisdom came from God into the heart, not the brain. Notice that. And they brought every man his present. 
Like the Queen of Sheba. They're coming to Solomon and they're bringing presents. You realize when Job's three friends came to Job, they said they made an appointment. They didn't bring nothing. People are showing up to Solomon. Solomon, I brought you a present. <laughs> He's like, just put it over. I got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, silverware. Great. Give that to some poor person. I don't have no silverware. You know, he brought presents. Vessels of silver. See, there's the silverware. We just read he doesn't have any vessels of silver. And vessels of gold. Okay, put that in my pantry. <laughs> well, what we just read. Garments. And armor. Well, he just made gold and shields and gold and targets and put it over there in, in, the, in the armory. He's in peace. And more spices. Horses and mule. A rate year by now. See all the animals that are in this this chapter, and he chooses lions for his throne. Because that one day on that throne would be the lion, the tribe of Judah. Every year this happens. Can you just imagine the stockpile that Solomon has? So when we go back over here, first Kings 14:26. First Kings 14 26 again. Now let's read verse 26 again. And let's see what Rehoboam done by what we read. And he took away the treasures out of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and, and the shield. Look at all the stuff he's taken. Everything that the queen of Sheba's bought. Everything that the kings are bringing. The navy that has come. Everything that Solomon has gathered. Rehoboam says, sell it. Bring it down to the pawn store. Bring it down to the bottom. Give it to this enemy. Maybe we can buy them off. Listen, Rehoboam just didn't have grandma's silver coins from the depression era of Israel. He didn't have that locket that was given to his grandmother by her mother and passed on to her. He had a wealth of wealth of wealth by what we read. And maybe threw some apes and peacocks in there too. I don't know. But Rehoboam has a wealth to offer to the world. It's a lot. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. And he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen. Whom he bestowed, that's the first time that word shows up, in the cities of four chariots. He is so magnificent king he's got chariot cities just for the chariots and his men and i mean listen i don't think that these cities were just you know they would have been lavish the great uh warehouse for the men of everything he's got that that silverware they brought give it down to the chariot city uh, number 1827 go give it to them 12,000 horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities of, for chariots, and with the king at Judah. I mean, Judah, Jerusalem. So he's got chariots there with himself. At Jerusalem, at the palace, he's got, in the backyard, he's got a, a garage. And in the garage, he's got chariots. And above the garage, he's got the horsemen for those chariots. And the king made silver too, be in Jerusalem as stones. Hey, king, here's some silver. It's like a rock. Put it over there. And cedars made. Now, in Deuteronomy 17 16 and 17, he is not, according to the law, to gather much of these riches. And God has given him the wisdom, and he's not saying no. I had enough. And in Jerusalem, in the book of Ecclesiastes, he tells us, everything I wanted to do, I did it. Nothing stopped me. And in the end, it says, vanity is vanity. The best thing to do, the conclusion of this book, is to obey God and do His commandments. A lot of those oriental customs, too, if you refuse a gift, it, they can get almost, upset. it can almost mean war. 
I mean, it's like Esau and Jacob. Here's this gift. No, I, I don't want it. Just give. No, no. Take the gift. No, no, no. And they would go on for hours. And they, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and cedars made he to be a sycamore tree. Sycamore trees is that little cedars are a value. But they're just like the sycamore tree. That are in the veil for abundance. And here's Deuteronomy 17, 16. Some had horses brought out of Egypt. See the sin. Deuteronomy 17, 16. Deuteronomy 17, 16. And let's see him breaking the law. Deuteronomy 17, 16. Now he's breaking the law. Now he's down for a downfall. 1716. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, <clears throat> nor cause the people to return to Egypt, <clears throat> to the end that he should multiply horses. <clears throat> Verse 17, he shall not multiply wives to himself. That comes later. And his heart, that his heart not be turned away. That's going to happen. Neither shall he greatly multiply, greatly multiply himself, silver and gold. And he shall write a copy of the law. And he has it. Psalm is for a fall. Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt. And linen yarn. That's the first time yarn shows up and it comes out of Egypt. First time a word shows up. Oh, by the way, sycamore tree. That's the first time that... Sycamore shows up too in verse 27. The rule they say the first time a word shows up, yarn. It has Egyptian roots. And the king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. It costs money. What's it to Solomon? And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt. You're around 17, 16. For 600 shekels of silver. That's what I can do with the silver. I'll buy a chariot. And a horse for 150 shekels of silver. And so for all the king of the Hittites. And for the kings of Syria. Did they bring them out by their means. So he goes to the Hittites. And he goes to Syria. And Egypt for these, for these horses. And God told him in the law not to. And the next chapter, Lord willing, will be Solomon turns his heart away from the Lord. He had great warnings. 